All right, we're here at Lancaster University and we're telling stories of the future. And so, yeah, what is the future going to hold? Will there be any need for circus performers? We don't know. But what we do know is I'll do a story of some kind. We'll do, we'll do a story about um, robots, robots, okay? So this is my story about robots. There was... Uh, Someone called, I'm making the name up right now, There's someone called uh, Zin. Okay, so Zin read an advert for a job. The job said, wanted humans to tickle the noses of robots. And Zin didn't have a job, so she looked at the advert, looked at the small print of the advert, the small print of the advert said, um, what did the small print say? I saw the advert myself, but I've just forgotten. Even though I'm the storyteller, I've forgotten. I remember. The small print of the advert said, humans may apply, previous applicants should not apply, and definitely no robots, entry tests imposed. Okay, that was the small print. Very hard to see sometimes, so that's why it's hard for me to remember. I've remembered it now. Okay, so yeah, Zim thought, I need a job. I'm gonna go around. I'd love to tickle the noses of robots, so I'm gonna go along. And she went along to campus because there was no offices anymore. There were no factories. There were no industrial areas. Everything was run on campus, right? like this one here, yeah, you see. So she went along to the campus to see if she could apply for this job. As she was walking through campus, she met someone. Someone who came ambling along, rushed up to her and said, Hey, hi, how are you? Are you going to that job uh, tickling noses of robots? She said, yeah, how did you know? I said, oh, I, I read it in your force field. Um, my name's Curve. I'm, I, I haven't had a job for ages either, so let's rub along together. And I, together they went along. Curve was talking nine to the dozen about what the weather was like, whether these planets were approaching or disappearing out of view, what the uh, precipitation on Mars was, and whether he would have to... Uh, invest in the future bitcoins that are coming up or whether he'd better plant a seed somewhere in the earth and see what came up. He, he was gabbling, gabbling and Zim humored him and uh, they got to the uh, campus zone for robot and there was a security detail on the robot on, on, the, on, the, on the area and you had to go through two doors the first door was a smoke glass door then the security guy security detail and then there was another smoke door you had to go through two doors so Zim stepped through the door first and the security detail kicked her shin he said ouch what did you do that for and the security detail didn't explain the security detail just said okay you can go in and then Kirk came in and uh, the security detail kicked Kurt's shin. And Kurt said, ouch, thank you very much, I'll have three. And security detail said, hang on, that's not the right answer, you're a robot. So no, you can't come in. And Kurt slunk away. Zim saw all this and she felt sorry for her newfound friend Kurt, who turned out to be a robot. But she went in and there she learned what she had to do if she was going to get the job of tickling the nose of a robot as part of a programming course. Now, what do you think she had to do? I'll leave you to speculate because it's my lunch break now, so I'll tell you the second part of the story later. Bye for now. How the world will end. Tickle robots, noses, and right. uh, so. You want to be a tickle robot? As there a, will be uh, artificial you. intelligence, yeah? Right? Because she never rehearsed it, sure. So Zim was employed to tickle the nose of robots as part of a training program for the robots to learn how to be more human. The more human they were, the more value they had in the open market for robot drones. The first thing Zim had to teach the robot his name was Lotus, and he'd arrived with the supervisor to be trained. The first thing Zim had to teach the robot was laughter. How to laugh. When and where and how to laugh. Well, Zim had never thought about this before. How to laugh was something quite complicated actually. And she did her best. She put the robot in learn mode. And then she tried to teach the robot. She said, the first thing you do is you lift your 
thorax. You lift your ribs up, breathe in, and then eject air while stuttering with your larynx. <laughs> and she did a few versions of that, and then the robot had a go. Well, it wasn't the most exciting job ever. And after a few goes with the, with the robot hat, she moved on to how to hiccup. So that's another important human function that robots needed to learn in order to become more real. So she said hiccups. Hiccups are very strange things. The how and when I can't supply to you. Uh, sorry, the when and where I can't supply. But I'll have a go at the how. The how is you breathe in and then you kind of burp a little, I think. I think that's the best way to do it. Lotus, Lotus the robot, was in learn mode, so watched as Tim had a go at hic hiccuping. <laughs> that was the day's lesson for Zim. Finally, and what she'd been hired to do, she taught the robot, as best she could, how to sneeze. She says, well, there are two types of sneezes. There is a chew, and there is a rather more ornate one, a tissue. That's the dialogue. But here's how you sneeze. You have to, first of all, wiggle your upper lip first to the right, then to the left, <laughs> and then you sneeze. So here we go. Can we have a go? To the right, to the left. A chew! Can you do that? A chew! There you go. Well, Zim was on plus or minus zero hours contract. And that contract meant that at first she had to pay them and then later, as the robot earned money for the company, the, the money that the robot earned would be paid, or the percentage of it would be paid to Zim. So the supervisor was happy with Zim, Zim's work with the robot and released her and said, we'll sell that robot on the open market now. You're finished now. Your zero hours contract is finished. You can go home. Zim went home. At the weekend, Zim had a friend at her place. And she said, hey, can you get me some mango juice out of the fridge? And her friend said, ha 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 Okay. You know what happened? Zim had fallen in love with the robot and bought it herself on the open market. There you go. That's the end of the story.